Hi, my name is Rich. One of my goals in life is to help encourage our kids to become producers of technology rather than just consumers of it. But this has been getting harder and harder over the last few decades with the advent of surface mount technology, higher, vastly higher integration, microcontroller reference manuals that are now thousands of pages long. Right? Um, but I think we can help. Right? One of the things kids need to be able to do as they're building a circuit is they need to be able to actually see what's going on, right? They need to be able to visualize it. They need to be able to explore. They need to be able to, you know, figure out how components are interacting with each other. And sure, they can buy a $10 multimeter and that allows them to measure, you know, basic voltages and stuff like that in the circuit, but that doesn't really help them. As soon as signals are changing over time, they really need an oscilloscope, right? And an oscilloscope traditionally is pretty expensive and pretty hard to use. Anyway, so I'm hoping we can turn some of that tide here. Right? One of the things that I've been doing over the last six months is building this thing called a flea scope. I'll give the camera a second to focus on that. What this is basically is a USB oscilloscope, right? It's a USB oscilloscope. You've got a BNC connector on one side that you can hook up to your oscilloscope probe, right? And you've got a USB connector on the other side that you can hook up to your computer, your tablet, or even your smartphone, right? And all you have to do is open a web page and you are up and running. You've got an 18 million sample per second uh, oscilloscope up and running on a web page and you can interactively explore your circuit. You can see the signal changing over time. Um, you've also got uh, nine digital inputs that you can sample at the exact same time and you've got basically a mixed, uh, mixed signal logic analyzer here. Um, you've also got a waveform generator that you can use to actually probe things into your circuit rather than just measuring them. Um, and you know, bill of materials on this thing is $13, right? I'm hoping we can sell it for $18. Um, you know, this is basically a fully functioning oscilloscope that um, you can trivially use, literally just open up a web page and you are up and running. No software to install, no anything like that, right? You open up a web page, you're up and running, you can probe signals in your circuit, you can figure out what's going on, and you can build and create technology. Anyway, um, there's, there's a lot more here, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but uh, we'll be right back. Let's show a demo. Okay, let's do a little demo of the analog side of the flea scope. First thing we need to do is we need to plug it in to the USB connector on the computer. Um, then we're going to plug in the uh, oscilloscope probe. And now basically, um, you know, the hardware is all set up. We need to get the software set up. And in order to set up the software, literally all you have to do is open a web page and you're going to see this connect button here. This connect button basically is how you authorize the web page to talk to the USB device. And we just pick our flea scope and we click connect again. And now we've basically, our oscilloscope is up and running. You can see that basically we're, we're looking at a, um, uh, basically an open signal. We're not connected to anything yet. And you'll see that, you know, we're basically, you know, 0.18 volts is the average uh, signal level here. Um, so let's go ahead and connect this up to the signal that we are generating, right? Remember the flea scope has a waveform generator uh, as well as an oscilloscope, as well as a digital logic analyzer. Um, so now you can see basically, you know, we're generating a one kilohertz uh, sine wave and we are sampling at one millisecond per division, right? And so there's 10 milliseconds of, uh, of time across the display, 10 divisions. Um, actually, there are 20 divisions. If you grab this scroll bar, you can see, you know, a little bit more. Um, but basically, you know, the signal is bouncing around and it's bouncing around because basically we are just, you know, as soon as we, we're doing about eight, eight samples per second here, if you see that guy blinking. Um, so basically, um, you'll, you'll see your, your display will be animated by eight samples per second. And every time that we start a new sample, we basically start in a different place on the waveform. Um, in order to fix that, right, we can ask it to do a trigger, a trigger, set a trigger level. We just set the trigger level to 2.44 volts. And so now we're only going to start capturing samples when the signal is above 2.44 volts. So we're not starting down here anymore, but we're still bouncing around a little bit here. What we can do to fix that is we can ask to change the trigger from an automatic or a level uh, uh, sensitive trigger to an edge sensitive trigger. We can say go to the rising edge, right? And you'll notice that that signal just went rock solid, 
right? Um, we're, we're, at, we're doing a rising edge trigger at 2.44 volts. We can also ask for a falling edge trigger. If you watch this, you'll see that, you know, now we're coming down off the trigger level, whereas if we go to rise, we're coming up off the trigger level. Um, anyway, so um, we've got basically a trigger level that allows us to kind of synchronize to the waveform so that we can see what it is that we're attempting to look at. We can also change the waveform. We can change it to an EKG, uh, or we can change it to a triangle wave, or we can change it to a square wave, um, and so forth. Um, we can uh, let's uh, we can we can change the frequency of this guy. Um, these EKG sign and triangle waves are what are considered arbitrary waveform generators. Uh, they are generated through a digital to analog converter. The digital to analog converter, actually, let's show this, is generating about 100 samples per cycle. So if we were to zoom in here, um, uh, you'll begin to see the artifacts of the 100, the 100 steps per cycle. And actually, if we zoom in more, you're going to see, you know, you'll definitely see the steps here, right? This is what's coming out of the digital to analog converter. Um, if we were to go into the, uh, the EKG, right, you're going to see this again. You see the steps, right, that's, that's actually occurring. Um, so we can um, change the frequency here. We can go, you know, the arbitrary waveforms can go up to 40 kilohertz. Um, and uh, the, digi the square wave can go up to four megahertz. Um, but anyway, so here we've, we've got, we're looking at a 40 kilohertz sine wave, right? Um, we can, oh, well, here you begin to see digital artifacts again as you're, as you're, you're sampling too, fat, too slow for the waveform frequency. So you'll begin to see some weird things happening. Um, but, um, uh, so that's basically showing how we can change waveform frequency. We can change the sample time. We can also change our display voltage. So for example, right now at the bottom of our, of our display is zero volts and the top of our display is 3.3 volts. We can ask for a bipolar display and now you'll see that we're going 3.3 volts up to negative 3.3 volts up to positive 3.3 volts. We can also zoom back out a little bit and we can say, give me a negative 6.6 .6 volts to uh, positive 6.6 .6 volt uh, display range. And if we were to go to a times 10 probe, which we're not going to do right now, we would actually have negative 66 volts to positive 66 volts uh, as the input range. Um, times 10 probe requires a slightly different calibration, um, and uh, we haven't gone through the calibration step here, um, but uh, basically, uh, it, you know, calibration takes, you know, five seconds. Um, but we have not actually done it. Um, and it will tell you if it hasn't done it yet. And if I were to switch to the times 10 probe, it would make us go through the calibration step. Anyway, so um, basically we can zoom in and out on the voltage. We can zoom uh, left to right on the time. Uh, and that's basically a brief introduction of the analog flea scope. I'll be right back with the introduction to the digital. Okay, so. Uh, here we've got a little example of the digital uh, capture in circuits. I've, I kind of cheated. I put the analog signal both into the analog input as well as into one of the digital inputs. And then we have an asynchronous trigger from an external function generator that's just a 10 kilohertz signal coming into bit B7. This guy's on bit B1. This is on bit B7. Now, first thing we can do is we can do kind of the same kind of things we did with our trigger. We can say we'd like to start the, the capture when B1 is 1, right? And so now you'll notice that we're, we're always high here, but we're still bouncing around a little, just like before we can say let's go to a rising edge trigger now this guy is totally stable we could do a falling edge trigger right and then now we're at the bottom rising edge trigger right uh, so this guy is stable but this guy is still shifting because he's asynchronous right we can also take multiple bits and we could say i'd like to trigger when uh, bit one goes one and bit seven goes zero right and now we've got a little bit of bouncing again because when this guy goes one this guy may or may not be zero right um we can um uh, uh let's we can clear these right we can uh turn off the uh, digital trigger by hitting the clear button. That clears basically all of these guys if we don't want to clear them all individually. And then we return to an analog trigger. We're not going to return to an, an well, 
we can return to an analog trigger. And then what you'll see is that we're we're still on rising edge, um, and we haven't really we haven't set the analog trigger level, so it's still at zero. And so basically, um, if we do that, we're now on analog trigger. We see a waiting down here that basically tells us we're waiting for a trigger. We haven't gotten our trigger. If we were to set the trigger level to be something other than zero volts, you can't get a rising edge at zero volts for a signal that is beginning at zero volts, right, or close to zero volts. Um, anyway, so we had to actually set the analog trigger in order to do this. But let's go back to digital again, and um, we are back to um, a one here. This guy turns green to show you that we're doing a digital trigger, whereas the green line up here says we're doing an analog trigger, right? Let's zoom in a little bit here and let's take a look at this guy because this guy is really interesting. Do you notice that he is changing? So let's do this. Um, actually, let's let's do something like this. Um, so actually, that's what we want to do. We're gonna. This is a 10 kilohertz input signal. Let's change this guy to be a 10 kilohertz sine wave. And now you'll notice that this guy is moving relative to this guy, right? These are two asynchronous signals. Turns out that the the, the uh, speed at which this guy is moving is basically the difference in frequency between th these two 10 kilohertz signals. If they had been exactly the same, um, uh, they would it would not be moving but one of them is you know slightly above 10 kilohertz or one is slightly below 10 kilohertz and so basically we're seeing it but what you can see here is you know the slowness at which this guy is moving this guy's moving about mm, one here let's zoom in a little bit we get a better idea he's moving probably you know maybe a half a second for him to move one full trace, right? And that means that basically these two guys are accurate to within two hertz of each other. So flea scope, you know, we, uh, you know, it's mainly meant to be cost effective, but it's also quite accurate. Even things like its timing, its voltage measurement, things like that. So for example, you know, we could, uh, again, this is a digital, digital display part. If this had been like a, you know, an I2C peripheral, you could basically trigger on a start sequence and then you can actually decode the entire I2C sequence being transmit from both source and destination. You can use your analog uh, input in order to find things like, you know, if there are pull-up problems and things like that, you can use your digital to decipher the data that's being sent, right? Um, anyway, um, I didn't actually show you things like uh, the, the analog voltages, but we'll, we'll get to that in another example. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, I'll be right back. Anyway, so there you've seen, you know, basically the analog and the digital input circuitry of the flea scope as well as its waveform generation. Um, these guys, like I said, you know, these are, you know, we're hoping to sell these for $18, $13 bill materials, right? And, you know, this gives students the ability to do 18 million samples per second on their, on their, their digital and analog signals. Basically, you know, you can think of that as measuring up to about a, about a mega, you know, one megahertz of an analog signal, right? With 18 samples per second so that you get some decent fidelity there. Um, the thing that's even more amazing, and we're not going to go into this now, is that you know you'll notice that there are 18 pins on the back here. Um, uh, those 18 pins are actually fully configurable. You can log into this thing using a different web page, and you can actually interactively control the pins. You can write programs for them, everything like that. So this is a lot more than just an oscilloscope, a lot more than just a logic analyzer or waveform generator. It's actually a full embedded system here. We've just talked about one half of it. When we talk about flea scope in deep dive mode, you'll, we'll talk about actually logging into this thing interactively through the USB, again, using nothing more than a web page, you can write a program, you can control all these pins, these pins do analog and digital functions, pulse width modulation, all sorts of things like that. You don't need a shred of a software development environment on your computer or phone or tablet. You can basically just log in with a web page, do everything right here. Anyway, um, thank you very much.